We're finally calming down from some lingering fast solar wind that brought us a solar storm about a week ago. And old region 2733, it's about to rotate back into Earth view, and it's still firing solar storms. Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week is definitely calming down compared to last week. We're finally exiting the remnant coronal hole that's kind of been throwing us pockets of fast solar wind and keeping us at unsettled conditions for quite some time. Now, we actually have had a couple solar storms that were launched on the sun's west limb, but they're not Earth-directed, so we don't have anything to worry about there. And it looks like everything else is going to be pretty calm over the next few days and possibly through the end of this week before we begin to see activity pick up again. The one thing we are anticipating is old region 2733 is going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next couple days, and we're hoping it's going to keep that solar flux up for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, you can see the last time we actually had some decent flare activity was back around the turn of the month. This was from region 2733 that even fired off a few C-class flares before rotating behind the sun's west limb. And believe it or not, it's continued to be active on the sun's backside. But meanwhile, Earth's side, you can see the X-ray flux kind of tanks like that, and therefore by proxy, the solar flux continues to be low. We're in the low 70s now, and it means we're holding onto the marginal range for radio propagation, but just barely. Luckily, this is not going to last because we're about to get region 2733 back around Earth's side. Now, it's going to be given a new number, but hopefully it will continue to brighten our day. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see back on February 1st was when we got hit by that fast wind from that really extended coronal hole. It bumped us up to storm levels and then down to active conditions. We then settled down to unsettled conditions, but then back up to active conditions again. That's kind of what these uh, remnant coronal holes do. They keep sending pockets of fast wind that really keep the activity going for a while. In all, it took about a week, but things are finally beginning to settle down. We're finally exiting that kind of crazy region, and it gave Aurora photographers a wonderful chance to get many gorgeous shots from all over the world. But now you Aurora photographers can kind of settle down and take a breather, because it looks like we won't have another chance for a solar storm for about 10 days. And during this fast solar wind from this extended coronal hole, we've seen some gorgeous aurora photos from all over the world. And it is my pleasure to introduce my guest host, Kelly Philby, an educator with the LA Unified School System. She has meant the world to my daughter and to myself, and she's going to walk us through some of these aurora photos. And to Kelly and educators all over the world just like her, thank you so much for teaching our kids the hard subjects, especially math and science. Hi everybody, I'm so excited to be here. I'd like to give a big shout out to my three beautiful children, Brian, Brett, and Anani. I've never actually seen an Aurora before, so I'm super excited to be here and showing everyone these gorgeous photos of Auroras from all over the world. The first one is from Sweden. Then we have one from Scotland, Ireland, Cumbria in the UK. As we go over the Atlantic, we see Aurora in Iceland. As we reach the Western Hemisphere, we see Aurora in Eastern Manitoba, Canada. It even dropped down to the USA and we see Aurora in Michigan and Montana. And as we go down south, Aurora was seen in Tasmania and New Zealand. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A, it's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can immediately see is that bright region on the east limb of Stereo's view. Keep your eye on it, do you see that? Bam, right there, did you see it? 
fired a solar storm. This is old region 2733, and yes, it continues to be active. Now, this region is going to be rotating back into Earth view here in the next few days, and I guarantee you we're going to keep our eyes on it. It should boost the solar flux up back well into the marginal range for amateur radio operators and emergency responders, so that's good news. On top of that, we also have that finger-like coronal hole. Believe it or not, that coronal hole is the one that we've been doing a dance with for more months than I can even count anymore, and it could easily bring us yet another chance for a solar storm in about 10 days. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are finally exiting that massive coronal hole that brought us so many pockets of fast solar wind over the past week. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with about a 25 to 30 percent chance of a minor storm with things settling down throughout the week. At mid latitudes, we're expecting unsettled conditions with only up to about a 25 percent chance of active conditions. So your aurora photographers take this week as a breather because in about 10 days we might have another chance for yet another solar storm. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, even though we do have a bright region on the Earth-facing sun right now, the sun is still spotless, so everything is in the green when it comes to solar flares. We have no risk for radio blackouts, which should make you GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. Now, we do have the solar flux lingering in the low 70s right now, and so this is the low end of marginal radio propagation, but the nice thing is we have region 2733 that's going to be returning into Earth view, so we could see that solar flux rise back into the mid-70s by next week, and that should make emergency responders and amateur radio operators very happy. Now, also because we are at a basically a solar minimum sun, the cosmic ray penetration is larger than it normally would be, so all you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include you prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is finally giving us a reprieve. We're exiting that massive coronal hole that's been bringing us some fast solar wind for easily over the past week. See, so aurora photographers definitely take this time as a breather because in about 10 days, we're going to have a new coronal hole that's going to rotate into the Earth strike zone, and it could give us a chance for yet another solar storm. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, the solar flux right now is kind of sitting at the low 70s, but never fear, because old region 2733 is about to rotate into Earth view, and when it does, it's going to boost that solar flux up possibly into the mid-70s, which means we're going to have marginal radio propagation again on Earth's day side. Now, as far as your GPS users are concerned, well, we don't have any solar storms right now, and the solar flux is reasonably low, so both the reception on the day side and the night side of Earth should be pretty excellent. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.